Hi, I'm Tom Mullaney. That's me right there. I'm here today to tell you about organizing your Google Classroom with topics. So when you or a student is in your home screen and you go and you click on the actual class, you wind up right here, which is the stream. And I'll just say it, I'm not a huge fan of the stream because one, it's just everything you ever do is just posted there in, in an infinite stream. And two, it's not organized in any way. There's no topics there. So I always tell teachers and students to live and do business in the classwork tab. That's where you want to be basically at all times. The only reason you ever use the stream as far as sharing something with your class as it directs you to do here is for those one-off announcements such as our room has been changed today. We are meeting in a different classroom today. Stuff that is important right this second, it will go through and give them an email notification. But once it's done, it is completely irrelevant and does not need to be referred back to. So that's all I would use the, the stream for. Let's talk about classwork though. So here's a class that I have for professional development and it's all organized using topics. So first thing about topics, I highly recommend using getemoji.com and search. You can search for what you're looking for. And as you can see, those are the things I've searched for and get you know what you need. Basically, it's just a visual cue. Let's go back to, the, to this class right here. It's a lot of text and white pixels, and that's it. And so these uh, emoji give you a visual cue. Don't go crazy with it, but just you know, here and there, a, an emoji at the start of a topic really helps. The other thing that really is helpful is that on the left side here, you can filter by topic. So if I just want my kids to focus on one topic, all they have to do is click that. They can all, you can, and boom, it's just that one topic. You can also generate links to topics and share those with students. How cool is that? So topics are really useful. I suggest when you start a new class, the first thing you do is you lay out your topic. So let me show you what that looks like. Here is a brand new class that has no work in it whatsoever. And I've laid out all the topics I want. Now, today's work, if you teach in block scheduling, and you only have three or four classes, anything you want students to work on today, this is an Alice Keeler suggestion, I recommend it. If you don't have block scheduling and you have five, six, seven classes, because you have to take any work out of here, you can click and drag to do that, but I would say maybe not do it today's work if you have to do it for six classes. Um, and then also a class resources uh, topic. That is a really nice topic for, these are the things I need you to refer back to at all time, but they're not assignments. Um, so class resources. From there, you just lay it out by unit or however you're comfortable doing it. And that's all you need to do. So let me go to a totally blank class and show you how to do that. So here, this is my B block. I go into my classwork. I have absolutely nothing. And I click create and I click topic. And I think I pasted. Oh, no, I didn't paste. So let's just say, let's get an emoji real quick. So let's just say uh, target, say I want to do a today's work. I like the target emoji for that. Um, I don't know why, it just kind of sticks out. So I paste that and then I go, do a little space and say today's work and it's there. And that topic is right there. And then you just do that for all the topics you want to do, create and topic. Something that's really cool, though, is if I go, say, let's say I go to my other class and let's say I add a class resource here. So let's say I create and let's say I do a material, but it could be an assignment and then I give it a topic. And so class resources. And then let's say I want to give it to not just my A block, but also my B block as well. And I'll just say example topic. And I will post even though there's nothing, or that was an example material, bear with me. And so now if I go back to my B block class and just hit refresh, and look at that, I have class resources. So anytime you create something and give it a topic and then share it with a second class, that class receives the topic as well. The other thing I would point out is that in this blank class where I just have topics but no work yet at the start of a semester, everything that doesn't have anything under a topic is invisible to the students. So the students would only see right now this right here, this silly post under class resources. They wouldn't say today's work. They wouldn't see any other thing other than that. 
topics are just a great way to organize what you want students doing, to filter out whatever you don't want students not, you know, to not do. Um, it helps you and the students stay organized in Google Classroom, and it avoids everything being just a, a just a continuous stream with no organization whatsoever. If you have any questions about this, please comment below or tweet me at Tom E. Mullaney. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.